often than not. Yeah. Okay, let's get that. I got a sister. Keep that out of the frame. Nope. Just there we go. I know. I've had it all. Still in the frame. <laughs> Still in the frame. I got a pipe, play me, it's gonna be alive. I hit it, the pussy is right. I keep a pole, with that it, I don't feel right. They're trying to come out of my soul, gone for the night. Alright guys, so today our problem is called Happy Number. It's a question that's being asked by Google, and our problem description says, write an algorithm to determine if a number is happy. A happy number is a number defined by the following process. Starting with any positive number, replace the number by the sum of its squares of its digits and repeat the process until the number equals one where it will stay or loops endlessly in a cycle which does not include one. Those numbers for which this process ends in one are happy numbers. So as an example, because that's a little bit wordy, if we're given the example 19, we would output true. And the reason for that is if we took the number 19 and took each of the individual digits in its number, squared those digits and added them, we would get 82. So the first digit is 1, we square 1, we get 1. The second digit is 9, we square 9, we get 81. So taking 1 and 81, adding them together, we get 82. We're going to continue this process again. So take 8, square it, we get 64. Take 2, square it, we get 4. 64 plus 4 is 68. Again, it's not equal to the number 1 yet, so we keep going. So 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, add them together, we get 100. And now if we do 1 squared, we get 1. 0 squared, we get 0. Plus 0 squared, we get 0. So 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. So again, we're outputting true for 19 because when we continuously square the sum of its digits, we're actually going to end up getting 1 in the end. So how do we do this? So the logic is pretty well constructed here, right? We have some sort of loop that continues while we haven't actually gotten to the number 1, right? Where our number doesn't equal 1. And while it doesn't do that, we want to break down whatever number we're on, go through those digits individually and square them, right? And then add them to a sum and then set our new n or new number equal to that sum, right? And if we've ever actually gotten to that number or that sum before, we know that we're in some sort of loop, so we need to return false. And otherwise, if we ever break out of that loop that we're currently processing, we would just return true because that would mean that we actually got to a point where n is equal to 1. So hopefully that made some sense. If it doesn't, we're going to jump into the code now. But let's get coding and hopefully it will make more sense once it's kind of down here on the editor. So the first thing we said we want to do is we want to have some sort of way to remember if we've seen the sum that we're currently at. So a really good simple way to do that is just have a hash set where we can throw all the numbers or all the sums that we've actually computed already. And if we ever get to a point where we're at one of those sums again, we know we're in a cycle. So we're going to make a hash set of integers. We're going to call it scene. Right? Because either these are the sums that we've seen, equals new hash set. And now what we're going to do is we're going to construct that logic. right? So while our number is not a happy number, we're going to continue doing some sort of work. And a happy number in our case is basically a number that's equal to 1. So while n is not equal to 1, we have some sort of work to do. And what we want to do is we want to get the current number that we're at. right? n might be any number, so we want to store whatever its current value is. So we're going to say int current is equal to n. And now we need to take the, the sum of the squares of the current number and add them, right? So we need some sort of sum variable to add to. So we're gonna say int sum equals zero. And now while we haven't processed all the integers or all the digits, sorry, in current, we need to continue iterating through current. So a really easy way to say this is just say, wow, current is not equal to zero. And so this is, what we're gonna do basically is we're gonna take the last number in current we're going to square it, add it to our sum, and then truncate that last number. So while current is great, not greater, sorry, while current is not equal to zero, meaning we haven't gone through all the digits, we are going to, we're going to process. We're going to process current. So now that we're in this loop, we're going to add to our sum. So sum plus equals, and now we just have to get the last digit in current. And a really easy way to do that is we know that the that last digits place is the ones digits place, right? So if we actually take mod 10, that's always going to return a number between zero and nine which will essentially always give us the last digit in our number. So we're going to add to sum, right? We're going to take our current number, mod 10. And again, that's going to give us the last digit. And to actually, you know, figure out this problem now, they want us to take the last digit and square it, right? So we're just going to multiply it by itself. So current mod 10 times current mod 10. So again, that's just getting the last digit in current and, and multiplying it by itself. Then once we've added to the sum that square, all we need to do is get rid of that number. So the next iteration of this loop, we don't process the same number. So we're going to say current divide equals 10. 
And so now once this loop actually finishes, we have our sum, right? Or our next number that we should start summing the squares of. So the first thing we want to do is actually just leverage this hash set, right? So if we've actually seen this, or it's in our hash set already, then we know that we're in a loop. So if seen dot contains our current sum, we're going to return false because again, we've reached some sort of sum that we've already seen. And if we haven't seen this sum, we need to record it, right? So we're going to say seen dot add sum. And once we've actually added it, now all we need to do is actually set our n, right, our n variable equal to whatever sum we currently have. So once this loop breaks, guys, that either means, sorry, once this loop breaks, we definitively have found a happy number because n is no longer, n is equal to one, right, because our condition broke, so we would return true. And then also inside of this loop, if we return false, that means that we've actually seen a number, we've ended up in a cycle, so we're just gonna return false, meaning it can't be a happy number. So guys, that's how to solve this problem. Let's make sure that this code works. Oh, I put three R's in current, sorry. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve happy number in Java. Again, this is a question being asked by Google. If you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor, leave it a like, and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time.